Hey, I'm, I'm John Palmer, uh, the author of How to Brew and Water. Um, I've been a home brewer for 30 plus years. Um, you know, fella gets married. He's like, I need a hobby. So uh, I've been I've been brewing quite a long time. Uh, always enjoyed it, the, the science of brewing. When you start talking about comparing fermentation methods, open fermentation versus closed fermentation, it helps to start out with the life cycle of yeast. From a brewer's point of view, we pitch the yeast, we wait through the lag phase when it's getting back up to full health, we watch that high... Uh, activity phase, the attenuation phase, when they're going through that uh, reproduction uh, cycle, they're rapidly taking in sugars um, and churning out daughter cells. Then at the end of it, um, they, there is that clarification phase where the yeast settle out, flocculate, and we consider the beer to be done. But there's a hidden phase in there, which we call maturation. And that's where uh, the, the yeast will clean up byproducts that they produced during that very fast, uh, high activity phase of, of reproduction. Real fermentation consists of both attenuation and maturation to get a fully fermented, clean tasting beer. Open fermentation is the original fermentation really right up through the 1800s practically most fermentation was open open squares open uh, kegs casks what have you because it was uh, kind of you know self-protecting the fermentation would form that big yeast mat on the surface and that would prevent contamination from getting to the wort also lots of carbon dioxide coming off that heavy carbon dioxide coming off, the, the insects avoid that because they know if they fly over it, they die and fall in. Once the attenuation phase of fermentation is over that high growth phase, then that croissant starts settling back down into the wort. And that's when it's time to transfer it to a maturation vessel, such as, you know, a wooden barrel or something. Um, and protect it from oxygen. And that was, that was, you know, the way it used to work. They would have these large open fermenters. When the, when the croissants start to settle, they would transfer the beer to casks, uh, wooden casks, and maturate it for a period of time, whether it's months or sometimes years in the case of stock ales. And then, you know, it would be fully matured, fully carbonated, and you could serve it. Open fermentation, when you, when you start realizing how, how it started and, and really how robust it is, you know, compared to the way we think about fermentation and homebrewing today in a bucket with an airlock on it, um, it's really quite easy. It's, it's as simple as having that bucket and throwing a clean tea towel over the top. Like I said, you've got the, the yeast layer on top. You've got the, the ever-evolving CO2. As long as you protect it from gross objects, you know, falling in from above uh, and falling in, including cats, um, then it's, it's, it'll be fine. And then once that croissant has started to uh, fall, then you can fasten the lid on with your airlock and let it sit for another two weeks. You know, if you've looked inside your fermenter, and, and most of you have, you know, peered in through the airlock hole, you you know that there's the hop scum that comes up and floats on top, you know, of the of the yeast. You get the the brown and green layers or around the edges there. All of that can be skimmed off, and you know, if you were doing it purely open, and there may be the occasional dead insect have fallen in there, you can skim those out too. As long as that yeast mass is continually evolving, not a big deal. The beer is protected. One of the main reasons, you know, from Brewer's point of view of skimming that uh, brown, brown scum and other things off the yeast layer is that it allows you to harvest very clean yeast for the next batch. And that was literally the name of the game, you know, 200 years ago. Uh, 
you did open fermentations, you harvested yeast from your current fermentation and put it in another jug and, and covered it with a towel and waited for the, that was for the next fermentation. Um, or you'd, you'd scoop it off and put it into the waiting wort, you know, uh, and got that fermentation going. We, we say that with an open fermentation, you get, tend to get more fermentation character into the beer a little bit more ester, um, uh, sometimes a little, a little bit higher attenuation. Um, the yeast are generally healthier in an open fermentation versus closed. They take in oxygen, they uh, synthesize amino acids that they need to grow, and they reproduce as they consume these sugars. So, yeah, you generally get a healthier yeast mass for the next fermentation for, from open fermentation. Uh, and that often translates to a little bit more fermentation character being evident in the beer, a little bit more ester, et cetera. For the absolute beginning brewer who does not appreciate sanitation and fermentation yet, uh, go with the closed, you know, do it, you know, obey all the guidelines that you've been given and keep it as clean as possible. Once you've seen it and done it a few times, and know what you're doing, then you can take a step back and relax, cut a few corners here and there. Um, open fermentation is very robust. The, the activity of the yeast, as long as it was clean initially, will keep it clean as that fermentation progresses. You just need to worry about oxidation and staling if you don't transfer it away from the oxygen towards the end. As far as conducting uh, an open fermentation at the homebrew level, check out pages 100 to 103 in How to Brew. I've got some pictures of um, equipment and picture of a, my friend uh, in Trondheim uh, at their brewery um, doing an open fermentation there. But a clean, a clean tea towel, you know, a clean uh, drying towel, dish drying towel with I mean, not a bath towel with the nap on it. Uh, that's a, li a little too much lint. It would work, but I think, you know, in the interests of marital harmony, you get your own towel rather than one of the bath towels to drape over the fermenter. I think everything will be a little better.